Good evening and welcome to this time of worship and reflection at the end of the day on Monday the 15th of January. A welcome to St Thomas's Church for those who are new to us. My name is Vicky, I'm part of the team here at St Thomas's. For this time you, you don't need to worry about uh, the words, the, uh, the order of service. It's a very simple act of coming before God before uh, we go to, to bed and go to sleep. So it's a reflective service of just relaxing in the presence of God, releasing those things of today and seeking his blessing on ourselves, on our family and friends, on our community and around the world. We, we pray for various issues that we see in and around us. If you'd like to have a candle lit for our time together or a cross in front of you or both, then please do feel free. But I'll just quietly lead us through our prayers and our reflections. If any of the prayers are known to you, please do join me, with me in saying the words. So, the Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I'm going to spend a few moments now just in quiet contemplation, thinking back over the day. Are there things that we have thought, said or done, or things that we should have done that we didn't? And we need to turn back to God and say, we're sorry, knowing that we have a God who is so merciful that he is just ready to forgive us when we say that we're sorry from our heart. So let's just spend a few moments in quiet and then I will lead us in some words of confession. And so I say these words on behalf of all of us. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And I will say the words of the night prayer song as a poem. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath, our souls are raised to life from death. So I'm going to read a few verses of Psalm 16 and then just give a short reflection. Psalm 16, a Psalm of David. And the key phrase is, The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you I have, to, have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. All my good 
depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. And in the night watches, he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. David was Israel's king. He was a poet and he was a musician. And what he is declaring here in this psalm is that the Lord is with him and therefore he will not fall. He will not fall. So many times, is it not true that we have our own plans and then we look to God and ask him to bless those plans? And what we really should do is look to God first and see what, seek what he wants us to do. What are his plans for us? I know that we've probably heard this many times, but in putting God first and his way of living, we will be given wisdom to help us make the right decisions. And continuing to speak to God and more importantly to listen to him, we grow deeper spiritually as we allow him to counsel and guide us. In this fast moving world, where there is so much busyness, to take the time aside and wait on God. For he is at our right hand and therefore we will not fall. With regard to the final verses of that psalm, it's often called a messianic psalm because it's quoted in the New Testament as referring to the resurrection of Jesus. David's heart was glad because he had found the secret of joy. Not something flimsy or fleeting or dependent on emotion. How you and I are feeling, no matter how many troubles we have, we can still have the joy of the Lord. Joy that is lasting because it comes from the presence of God. The presence of God within us. We have his Holy Spirit. Our joy is not based on circumstances, but on God. And he is forever. The God who created the heavens and the earth, our God, is from everlasting to everlasting. And the joy he gives is eternal. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight, now and forever. Amen. Repeat after me, if you would. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord. 
I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Here is the song of Simeon. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Let us turn to our prayers and I'm going to use our prayer letter uh, from yesterday to lead us in our prayers. Lord, hear us as we pray for the continuing situation in Ukraine. We pray for strength of purpose for the leaders of all nations seeking to restore peace and freedom in that country. Lord, hear us as we pray for what is happening in the Middle East right now. For the land of Israel and Palestine. And we pray for an end to the conflict. Lord, we pray for all those who have lost their lives in this conflict and for those who are left behind who are grieving. Lord, we pray. We pray against more hatred being stirred up because of this violence. But we pray, Lord, that there will be an end to terrorism. Lord, hear us as we pray for the situation with the Houthi regime in Yemen. And we pray, Lord, that that does not lead to a much wider conflict between nations. We especially pray for the people of Yemen who have already suffered so much as a result of years of civil war. Lord, hear us as we pray for the millions of Christians around our world in so many countries who face arrest, imprisonment, torture and even death simply for proclaiming Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Father, we pray for all those who are victims of violence. In every country in the world, Lord, we know that there is unrest of one kind or another. We pray for those who are caught up in the horrendous trafficking of human beings. We pray for all those who are fleeing their homes because of fear, because of lack of resources, for those who are seeking safety and security and freedom. Lord, help us never to take for granted these things that we have in our country. And we thank you, Lord, for that freedom, but help us, Lord, to use that freedom in the right way. Direct our thoughts and our actions to helping others. We pray for all those in our country, Lord, in positions of power and leadership, both in national government 
and in our local council here in Blackpool. Give wisdom to all in authority. And bless our King, Charles III, and all those who counsel him. May we be led, both through the, the King and through Parliament, in the ways that will lead to the common good. Lord, we pray for our emergency workers, for those who work in the police and the ambulance and fire and rescue services, with the Coast Guard. Lord, protect them in the course of their duties. We pray for all those who volunteer across, across our nation, who give their time to help or protect others in distress. For those who are operating food banks and those who work in supporting and providing advice to those in need. We pray for our NHS and social workers, for all those helping uh, people who are suffering acute physical or mental health crises. Lord, we thank you for our teachers, for all those who lead the next generation. Give them wisdom and give them all that they need to develop young people and children to, leave, to lead whole and complete lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, hear us as we pray for Christians across Blackpool, that we may know such um, a sense of unity and oneness. Lord, help us to proclaim the gospel of Christ together. And may we see such a turning in our town, Lord, towards Jesus, that we see people saved, souls saved in the name of Jesus. And I pray particularly tonight, Lord, for the Message Trust staff and volunteers who are going round the schools in our town this week for the campaign of No More Knives as they talk about knife crime and the laying down of such weapons. Lord, inspire them and bless them. And Lord, may they see youngsters stop and think and lay down those weapons, those knives, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we turn to a time of prayer to the Lord for those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit, in a moment of quiet, bring before God those known to you who need his healing touch at this time. Lord of comfort and peace, we pray for all who are affected by the breakdown of family relationships, domestic abuse and divorce. We pray for all those who are struggling to escape from addiction or any form of physical, emotion, emotional or spiritual oppression. We pray, Lord, for all those who are lonely and for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. At this particular time, Lord, we remember the family and friends of our brother in Christ, Joe Atkin. And we thank you, Lord, for his devoted service in so many different ways within and beyond our church family, for his friendship and kindness, which meant so much to all of us who knew him. Lord, surround Sue, his widow, with your love and your peace. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings and Lord of lords, making the true light to shine, lighten our darkness now and evermore, that with our lips and in our lives we may praise you, for you are our God now and forever. Amen. And for this church and for our homes, visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join all our prayers together in the words that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we draw our time of worship and reflection to an end, if you did light a candle at the beginning, please do remember to extinguish it before you go to sleep. And our closing prayers. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look to you, O Christ. And may the living waters of Christ cleanse us. May the Spirit descend upon us and the blessing of God be with us this night and always. Amen. Amen.